Steve, I'd like to compliment you on the Star GB stand here at Mac 2016. How's it been so far and what type of visitor have you, have you had? It's been very good. Um, we, we do the Mac exhibition every two years. It's a good opportunity for us to, to brand ourselves into the marketplace. Uh, this year has been exceptional already. You know, three days in, really good visitor numbers, attracting a lot of people from the sliding head background already and also new people into sliding heads. So is that an area growth for Star? They're looking for people that don't currently adopt that technology? Yeah, Star, Star as a company in Japan are building bigger sliding head machines now up to 42 millimeters. So we can now attract people from a normal fixed head background who can take the advantages of sliding head technology in speed and accuracy that normally would, would be made on a, on a fixed head machine. And I understand you're moving, got a new home. Yes, we have a new factory built as we speak uh, in, the, in the middle of Derby. Uh, gives us an opportunity to expand. We've, we've outgrown the current facility uh, and hopefully around August, September, we will be uh, unveiling the new facility. We visit a lot of engineering companies, Steve, and the perception is that Star are now number one in the side and head arena. Do you agree with that? Yeah, we'd like to think over the last 10 years we've strengthened our position in the market and now we'd be up there as, as number one supplier of sliding head lathes. In the future, going to continue to grow with a new facility? Yes, I think that, you know the new facility gives us a, a springboard to move forward to sort of rebrand ourselves and, and uh, educate our customers even more and potential customers into the benefits of sliding head technology with Star GB. Well, I look forward to seeing it and thanks for your time. Thank you. Alec, this is a brand new machine, first seen here in the UK. That's true, it's available for sale in June, but it is a UK premiere for the SV20R. Why has the machine been introduced and, and what is it? Basically, we're aiming this machine at companies doing high value, complicated, intricate parts. There's lots of features on the machine that makes machining those sort of work pieces a lot faster on this type of machine. Okay, what, what are they? The features we've got, we've got a platen that's got um, five cross working tools, seven turning tools. So that gives you the high speed that you're used to with traditional sliders. And then we've got an eight station turret that gives you that flexibility or configurability, if you like, for uh, more complex work pieces. So with all these tools, how many tools could be in operation at once on a part? Basically three. We've got a function called superposition mode, which allows the turret to be working on one side of the component while the platen is working on the other side, and obviously you've got the back working that's giving you overlap on the back side of the part. Okay, what about guide bush and non-guide bush? Absolutely, this can change between the two. So in non-guide bush mode, we can do parts up to 50 million length, and in guide bush mode, we can process in a single chuck in up to 205 millimeters. So where's it gonna be ideally suited? You've got a part there, so we'll have a quick look at that, but who's gonna buy it? I think people that are doing, like I say, high value parts, medical companies, aerospace companies, components that are really intricate and complicated. That's where we're aiming this machine. And is it going to reduce the cycle times on those types of parts? It is, because there's so many tools we can get in simultaneous cut. So naturally, the cycle time will be reduced. We've also got a feature called Star Motion Control, which is standard on this unit. This basically turns a standard NC program into a hybrid program. It reduces the idle time by minimizing acceleration and deceleration and smoothing the whole process. So it's a, it's a very useful feature just for taking another three, four percent off the cycle time. And how popular has this been this week at the show? It's been very upbeat for this puff machine. I think um, demand will obviously outstrip supply in, at the beginning, so that's good. Alec, what are the benefits then of the SW12 that we have here? Main benefits is the twin platen arrangement. So we've got opposing platens that allow us to turn parts such as this. This is less than one millimetre, it's 50 mil long, so it's a very stable cut as one platen. The forces on one side of the platen are equaled by the forces on the opposing side of the platen. That's very interesting. How, how do you avoid it actually flexing or breaking just because you've got those two forces? Absolutely. Again, we're turning very, very close to the guy bush face, so it's a very, very stable process, and this can be turned as long as the main stroke on head one. And how long could you go with a similar sort of part like that? Well, basically sliders can turn parts as long as you can handle the parts outside of the machine. So there's, there's no limit, but this machine, it's got 135 mil of stroke on head one. So you could go up to 135 mil without restroking. And even at a very small turn into a very small diameter like that? 
Absolutely, we've done other tests that's point turning you know, point 0.2, point 0.3. Maybe not quite as long, but... And, and what about on the end here? What is that? Have you engraved there? Yeah, we've got a full suite of engraving cycles that suit all our um, models, and, and we're just engraving SW12R2. Uh, we've also got a, a scraping cycle that we're using, again, that's free to all our customers in, you know, that use it in the fastener industry. And is this one of your smallest sliding heads? It is. We've got an SR10J that's a little bit smaller, but this machine, you know, it accepts you know 10 mil square stick tooling, so it's it's pretty compact. Driven tools, obviously, as well. How many? Absolutely. On the back side, we've got eight stations that can all accept driven tools. Across the twin platens, we've got up to six stations that can accept uh, driven tools. So, Alec, this is the SR38. What's the capability of the machine? This machine takes us up to 42 millimeter diameter bar in non guy bush mode. So it's putting you into a different market? It is. We feel this is in direct competition now with the uh, twin spindle, twin turret machines at that capacity. This machine offers you know, a lot of benefits. Um, what are those benefits? Well, it's got a uh, fully programmable B-axis, so it gives us angular features on front uh, working and on back working. We've got five axis simultaneous capability as well if required. So you've got full five-axis simultaneous machining capability? Absolutely. It's fitted with the FANEC 31IB5 control, so it gives us that function. So what markets and what sort of parts would you be making? I think this machine will suit most general subcontract shops. Uh, in terms of footprint, it's only 12% bigger than our existing SR32J. So although you've got a lot of capability, it's still quite a small footprint machine. So even if you still wanted to uh, machine down to small diameters, you could still do that with this machine? It can. Obviously, there's a limitation on the bar feeder. We're going to fit a turbo 555 with this machine, so minimum bar is going to probably be 5mm diameter. And guide bush and non-guide bush? Absolutely. Again, in non-guide bush mode, we can process parts up to 95mm in length. In guide bush, we've got a Z1 stroke of 320. So tell me about the platen, Alec. On this machine, we've got a portal platen design. It's equipped with an independent X3 slide as well. So that gives us the ability to balance, turn, uh, on both sides of the component for maximum metal removal. So you can get rid of more material quickly? Absolutely, if you're going down from plus 40 millimeter down to 20 millimeter, we can do that in one hit. And you're, you've sold a machine or machines already, I believe? We've taken orders pre-show for this machine. We showed this at our open house back in October, and I think we took three or four orders, and this machine's going to a customer directly after the show. Thanks, Alec. You're welcome. Well, Alec, this is an impressive uh, product. What, what is it? It's a Star Saber. Uh, all these components are being made uh, on the machines on the booth. So, for example, the handle, we've done three different types. This is a 303 stainless. This is done on the ST38 out of an inch and a half bar. The shaft, that's done on the 20J with uh, a parts unloader box to accept the parts after they've been processed. The tip we're doing on the R4. Uh, the lens we made pre-show out of acrylic uh, in our tech centre, the locking ring on the 32J and the knuckle, uh, or the coupling rather, we're doing that on the SR38 and we're engraving uh, company names and people's names on the component as well. So uh, not only is it a massive giveaway to, to, to companies coming on, what else would you be doing if it wasn't for this product? Well, I think. At shows like this, you know, having a nice giveaway is important, you know, having an interesting demonstration is important, but I think with this we've taken it to the next level. Everybody that's taken it away and given it to their grandson or their son or their daughter, you know, they're going to put a big smile on their face, so that's what it's all about. Well, I would say that obviously Star fills the force. I hope your customers do as well. Absolutely. Cheers.